Candace, uh, during we can the BLM talk about George Floyd riots, but we're not talking about the we're, same we can talk sensitivity about the toward police officers. We're not talking so, about BLM. Can we? Can, can but we, but can, it's relevant because it was happening in the exact same not, city. Hey there, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel, Mindset Politics. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing this clip between Candace Owens and Don Lemon. She goes on to the Don Lemon show. They have their debate. Let's just say it didn't go very well for Don Lemon again. And before I even go any more about this video, let's talk about Don Lemon for a second. I mean, talk about someone who, you know, in what we would say is what? He fumbled the bag. Like, seriously, who gets fired from CNN, then gets an opportunity to interview the richest man in America, Elon Musk, and absolutely interrogate him and damage your image as a journalist, as a as a person starting your new Don Lemon show. Right? So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on it. I have to say, I, I, Choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so is this same, the question you want to ask? The same question is you said you said that they are killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you. I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment, and I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to like get you or anything. I was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company. I mean, you're the, I mean, when you say the buck stops with the president of the United States, regardless of what happens, right? So I, why would this, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you- And I'm not trying to upset you. The way, well, you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing the questions, I think is, is not cogent. Um, it's not uh, what? Not cogent. Cogent. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, the... Right. And so this guy, he's really been just making mistake after mistake after mistake. And it, it amazes me because... It amazes me because he should have the experience to know how to interview guests and when to push and when not. And I don't think he listened or he doesn't know that lesson yet. So before I keep going, let's go ahead and play this video. You already know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Play the video. Can we? Can we, get, can but, we but it's relevant because it was happening in the exact same not, city. Okay. Like, and so suddenly, like I said, I'm just dizzy because I can't figure out whether or not you care about police officers okay. or you don't care about them because now you're sharing emotional stories and now you're cutting me off when I want to share one about a Molotov cocktail that was thrown into a police cruiser in New York. Yeah, let's pause this really quick. Uh, Candace Owens is the last person you truly want to uh debate right like when i say debate right i'm talking about you want to challenge everything that she's saying she's just not that person you're, you're not going to have a productive show trying to debate every word that comes out of her mouth you know you you'd be better off just asking what does she think why does she think that way what are some of the receipts she has for thinking that way why does she you know where is she getting that from and then state a couple of your points and then move on I mean, that's if you want a productive dialogue with someone like her, that's probably the best approach because she's not going to back down. She's not going to stay silent. She's going to say what she's going to say. And she's done it at the highest level. She did it in front of Congress. So you're not going to phase her at all. So it's just it's just interesting that he chose to do the interview this way with someone like her. Uh, and the other thing, too, is is what they're really going back and forth about is. This double standard of, OK, you guys are up in arms about Ashley Abbott, but you're not up in arms about the cops who have lost their life during the BLM riots and how some cities were burned, uh, vandalized. People lost their businesses. People lost money. Um, we don't we don't want to talk about that because that's 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 black people. That's OK. Uh, and furthermore, you can go back in history and see uh, the the news really did not cover it as effective effective as they could right they weren't really uh, being very objective back then and they still are not there no one's going to come out publicly right and say you know what those black people in seattle or those black people in you know this city here or there you know they were really wrong for burning down 
No, they they were not. It, uh, and I, I want to make clear that I, I know that there are protests still happening in yes. major cities across the United States. I'm just not seeing the reporting on it that I that right, I had that's right. for the first few weeks. That's um, right. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's they're not. This is a movement. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And and everyone beware because they're not going to stop. It is going to. They're not going to stop before election day in November, and they're not going to stop after election day. And that should be everyone should take note of that on both levels that this isn't they're not going to let up and they should not and we should work by some college graduates in the media the platform that you were on cheered it on because this was about yeah. justice but suddenly when it's when it's patriots you want to talk about the sad stories of the police officers you're now mm -hmm. saying that because you don't comply well, you can get I, shot I think yeah. that's fine if actually that's a very great point uh, that's exactly what the problem is now the problem right now is someone's feelings and, and, and the social issues have superseded things that are important to our constitution, our, our um, uh, what would I say, um, patriotism. Like that right now is on the back burner. What's up front for everybody right now is how do I feel? How can we save these people? You know, how can we, even though these people are coming in last, how can we get them a trophy? That's what it's turned into. And it's, it's blowing up in, in, in our face right now. It just is. That's your perspective. That that Ashley Bobbitt wasn't complying, country. but then we should probably revisit the George Floyd riots. Many Americans can be deemed as patriots in this country. Even okay, if well, I, I, I don't know why you're cutting me off. I haven't cut you off. I'm, I'm just trying to get out my point. I'm trying to tell so, you because we have very limited time. And the reason I'm cutting okay, you off is because on. I want you to stick to the subject because you're deflecting and you're talking about I'm BLM. Not I'm not on, deflecting. I'm not deflecting. Let me make a point across. And BLM has nothing to do with the insurrection. We're talking about the event. It was just making a point right and and that's the thing about you invited someone on the show you ask them a question you have to give them their the the time to answer a question this happened actually with um uh, pierce morgan she went on pierce morgan i mean I, it wasn't a productive conversation either because pierce morgan is a professional guy who will cut people off every single second like he's just known for that right and so that's why a lot of these these podcasts or these shows, sometimes it's just annoying watching because they don't let the person truly answer and they want to debate with them. It's like uh, when someone on the right goes on to CNN and they ask that person a question and CNN is trying to fact check them in real time and say, nope, you're wrong about this, you're wrong about that. Okay, did you invite me on the show to interrogate me or did you invite me on the show because you wanna know what I think? Those are two different things. That happened in Washington. And I just so want to know what the definition of an insurrection is, because when I was living in D.C. and the BLM was pulling down statues, they were marching on Washington. Ever right. the media was fine with it. So I just, I, it's just, it's confusing because the Brett Kavanaugh hearings and the women were storming into the Capitol. They were lining in the I'm hallways. I'm now because you're I talking just, about I'm something really that has nothing about to when do it's an insurrection with the insurrection and when it's not an insurrection. Because the Brett Kavanaugh hearings definitely looked like the definition of an insurrection when they were chasing down senators in hallways trying to stop them from voting. But for some reason, the media supported that because like hashtag me too. Again, I'm, okay. I'm just trying to get a consistent definition of when it's okay to storm the Capitol building and when it's not okay to storm the Capitol building okay. because it's an insurrection. Candace, we're not talking about BLM. And we're and not- That's the problem. We're never talking about to, anything we get, Democrats do. I, I want to get back on the subject because like this is not Trump helping supporters. anyone. This conversation okay. is not helping anyone. So let's get so back let's move on the subject. Be Perfect. Please, let's move on. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's look look at his face. Look at this guy. Look at him. He he's not I don't even know if this guy's really enjoying what he's doing. I mean, his his the whole falling out with him and CNN probably wasn't a good thing, okay? Obviously, um terrible si situation, you know, you don't wish anybody to get fired. Uh, however, maybe he brought it on himself. We don't know. We'll never really, really know the facts of the matter, but we do see the results. And the results are showing that Don Lemon, you know, from where he's coming from in his resume, he's not doing very well. Just look at his YouTube channel, look at his ex account, go through the comments, look at his posts, and you're going to see a lot of criticism. I mean, he's been ratioed for sure. And it's not because all of these conservatives are coming out of the woodwork and targeting Don Lemon. It's part of his own audience. They're just not happy with how he's going about interviewing people. And listen, we'll watch interviews where people will push back. That's cool. That That's fine. But I find him to be very excessive, not willing to listen at all, not willing to let someone like Elon Musk truly answer questions. And g getting to the point where he's interrogating him 
it just is not a good look. Let's actually go to this other clip. So the word you said was f right? Yeah. Is that exactly the word? So um, what did you mean by that? You think it's okay to say the word, to call people a f to their face? No, actually, I said words have meaning. And so when you start allowing the perverts to dictate speech, then words just have to go away. And as I said in that clip, when I was growing up and I was reading English novels, when people say you're walking through the woods to get a faggot, it meant a bundle of sticks. All right, hold on. Let's rewind this again, because I really want you guys to listen very carefully to his line of questioning and what his intentions are behind that question. Okay, and then listen to the first part of her answer. It's really good. So the word you said was f right? Yeah. Is that exactly the word? So um, what did you mean by that? You think it's okay to say the word, to call people a f to their face? No, actually I said words have meaning. And so when you start allowing the perverts to dictate speech, then words just have to go away. When you start allowing perverts to dictate speech, the meanings of words go away. Now, this is absolutely what has happened in this country. No question about it. Again, it's always mindset. Somewhere along the line, people start develop developing this mindset that, you know what, I'm going to keep using this word called racism over and over and over again, even though it might not be racism, right? And think about what I'm saying for a second here. If you went to college, you were not allowed in your essay to just use words, you, just to make up stuff. You had to be very intentional with the words that you were using to make sure that you were using the right words because that was the correct meaning for what you were describing in your essay. For whatever reason, on social media today, especially on the news and a lot of these social issues, people are just using words and the meaning of those words are out the window, right? They, it's just, if someone, for example, if someone does not support me as a black person, that must mean they're racist. If I get rejected as a black person, that must mean they're racist. That must mean the system is oppressing me. This is the type of rhetoric that does exist. Not all black people think this way, by the way, but this is something that the left likes to push that's exactly what it is. Or like the governor in uh, New York saying, yeah, if you're a black person in the Bronx and you're a kid, you don't even know what a computer is. I mean, it's it's just so out of touch and not being tactful with the language. Uh, and then the other issue here is he's trying to get a clip, right? He's trying to get a viral moment with her about her use of that word. And but he's refusing to recognize the context in which that word was used. And so he's doing what I, I think his worst trait right now and his whole brand right now is he's going down this interrogation road. It's, it's really embarrassing. And as I said in that clip, when I was growing up and I was reading English novels, when people say you're walking through the woods to get a faggot, it meant a bundle of sticks. And then they yeah. said, you can no longer say this word that has a real meaning, right? A bundle of sticks because some pervert took that and threw it as an epithet towards gay people. I think that's actually, that's a, a wrong way of thinking is then what you're doing is you're allowing perverts to dictate society. So I, I, so I don't like the death of the English language because ever, people are getting offended. So that's like, I could pick any. Now, listen very carefully. What is she doing? She gave you a fact, right? She, she gave you a fact. What was the original meaning of that word? How was that word used? And what happened with the word? She, she gave him that, right? But watch how he responds. Word. I could say, you know, plant. And from now on, every time I see a gay guy, I'm going to be like, he's a total plant. And then eventually they say, you can't say plant anymore. It's like, no, no, no. This is a real word that has meaning. Attack the person who's you, perverting the word, but you don't you don't suddenly disappear a word and you say you can no longer say it. Or you can no longer read these Virginia Woolf novels uh, because the word has been perverted. I don't think that's I think that's a backwards read, way of thinking. You can read Virginia Woolf novels. And the only people I know who, who are trying to ban books uh, Virginia Woolf uh, and other books that even say the N word. I mean, it's conservatives that that's who's trying to do it. I don't think that you should be banning books. I actually, but I do know, Candace, mm -hmm. um, that words language evolves over time. And when people say that word to me, they're not calling me a cigarette. They're no, not well, calling obviously, me. Obviously, and that's the point. It has a context. Of, yeah. So if you want to punish that right. person because they're saying that offensively, that, you know, if, if you if you feel that this person, but it's not fair to then say to everybody else who's not using that word, that this word has now been banned. I just think that's ridiculous. You know, yeah, that's my point. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand what she's saying. Uh, I don't think people who have an open mind are going to want to understand what she's saying. 
And, and it's really very simple. Like you can't have it both ways, okay? And this is what the left is really doing today. And what's happening is they're going out there and they're saying uh, racism exists. Uh, black people are oppressed more than ever before. Um, legals are allowed to cross over our border illegally. Um, they deserve to get benefits and be uh, put into these hotel rooms. And if you start to challenge any of this rhetoric, you are hateful, you are a racist, that's hate speech, you know, you are this and you're that. And it's funny because the Democrats end up becoming the very thing that they are campaigning on, right? So think about it. They become the very thing that they complain about. And it goes both ways. It really does, right? So when black people are out there complaining that the system is against them, they become the very thing they're fighting against, because it's mindset, it's human behavior, it's a way that it happens. If that's all you obsess over and you're always thinking from a place of fear, scarcity, and lack, that is who you become. I, think I, I don't think you can to... so suddenly say, go backwards and, and delete words that had real meaning because someone has perverted it because it never stops. It just, it just becomes constantly having to update the language for people's feelings. I don't think that, that we should be doing that. So you would never call me a f to my face, right? Well, I don't. I, why would I just randomly call you a fat? I'm just, I mean, Have you ever I, it, come on, guys. So you, you see that? Let's we're going to rewind it. He wants to get a clip that this is the arrogance of him. This is what he tried to do to Elon Musk. I mean, it's it's quite embarrassing. I'm just, I mean, Have you ever I seen mean, the Louis C.K. skit against on? Against Have you ever seen the Louis C.K. skit on? Uh, no, I like Louis C.K., but I don't think I've ever seen you a skit watch on it. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but you would never call like a gay person that to their face. That seems like an absurd, like, why? no, court, I'm not just going around. For, I'm a 35 year old mother. I don't go around being like, hey, you're a f and that's just like, I'm not 18 years old. Like, I'm not going around calling people names, period. And I wouldn't go up to a fat person and call them names. I wouldn't call it just like a, it's an absurd thing to be going around pointing and calling people names because I don't like them. I would no. So the answer is no. I would. Yeah, it, it's just <laughs> you guys see what he's trying to do. Right. He's trying to get a click. He's trying to go viral. He's trying to, um, you know, maybe he genuinely believes this is the best way to interview people. Maybe that's what that's the horse he's riding right now. Maybe. But I tell you one thing, I don't believe it's working for him. I believe it's actually backfiring on him and it's not actually productive to the conversation because his line of questioning becomes a huge distraction. So instead of actually asking people questions so we can get, uh, gather data and truly understand what they're where they're coming from and what they really think and how they feel, he's not doing that. He's he's asking questions in a very arrogant way, trying to get a reaction, trying to get a clip. And I just think it's really unbecoming of who he is and and really how far he's come and and just just his resume, like this is embarrassing for someone like that. But anyways, I mean, you, you can't ask someone like Candace Owens to come onto your show and think you're going to be very productive asking questions like that. Obviously, that's his mindset. This is my mindset. So what is yours? What do you think about his line of questioning? What do you think about the entire show? Did you watch it? I mean, what do you think about Candace Owens and, and what she's saying about these words and other topics that they were discussing answer all of this and more in the comment section below. I want to thank you so much for checking out the video today and we'll see you in the next one.